year 2000 NCAA championship tournament is underway. First round action on the road to the final four. And we specifically come to you from Minneapolis, St. Paul, with a first round game in the Midwest region featuring the Creighton Blue Jays out of the Missouri Valley Conference and the Auburn Tigers seated seventh and out of the SEC. One of four games to be played here. We direct your attention to the bottom of the screen. Auburn and Creighton tip off first. Iowa State and Central Connecticut State meeting game two. Then this evening, we'll begin with Maryland against Iona and UCLA against Ball State with the winners advancing to Saturday. Hi, once again, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. I would think, Bill, more than any recent year, this whole 64 team field is wide open. Can you hear all the coaches across the country saying, fellas, get hot, get on a roll. It seems even everybody's got an opportunity. Let's talk specifically about an Auburn team that is without its star, Chris Porter, even more reliance now on Doc uh, Robinson in the backcourt. Well, consistently, he's going to have to make some house calls. They're going to have him involved in the offense. You can see he gives it up. He provides a lift for this team offensively runs the offense, also runs the fast break, has a good understanding of field. You'll see him doing more one-on-one -on -one opportunity baskets, whether it's on an open side of the floor or getting it down the middle. He runs the middle, throws flyers, makes some tough shots, a very difficult out. Well, they face a great Blue Jay team that comes out of the Missouri Valley Conference, and this is one of the outstanding perimeter shooting teams in the country. Well, when you look at this club, two outstanding guards. Ben Walker, a guy that can rebound. Also, you can see the evenness of the scoring. Ryan Sears is a guy that runs the show. He'll play off the basketball, let things happen. Eventually, he'll step up only when they need it. He won't force shots. He's got great range. You'll see an array of three-point releases with the defense moving up. You'll see some back cuts as well. Well, as we mentioned, Auburn is without its star. For more on that, here's the third member of our commentary team, Armin Kafeyan. Thanks, Vern. Obviously, they're not playing Auburn with, without Chris Porter today. Suspended late last month for twice taking money from an agent, a total of about $2,500 for breaking the NCAA rules on amateurism. That led to this very poignant scene late in the season at Auburn, senior night, Porter on hand, hugging head coach Cliff Ellis. Well, even without Porter, head coach uh, Dana Altman of Creighton told me, he said, they're the most athletic team we face all year. I just spoke to Coach Altman. He says, we have to rebound with them. We've got to play hard. Back to you. All right, Armin, it's Creighton against Auburn, and we'll have the opening tip right after these messages. Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in downtown Minneapolis, about uh, half a mile from the banks of the Mississippi River. And in this beautiful city, the site of the first round Midwest region encounter. Dana Altman comes in in his sixth season as the head coach at Creighton with a record of 99 and 77, a native Nebraskan. And Cliff Ellis also in his sixth season at uh, Auburn University, where his record is 119 and 68. Starting lineups. On the left, Creighton with West, Huss, Johnson, Walker, and Sears in the backcourt. And for Auburn, it's McGadney, Njai, Jay Hurd gets the start in the backcourt for the fourth consecutive game. Damian Fishback and Doc Robinson. And Vern, uh, Cliff Ellis is going to have to guard his guys the three-point line. The dilemma when you play Creighton is they're very good going without the basketball. So you may see some back cuts, but you've got to take away the perimeter shooting early of Creighton. Auburn finished second to Arkansas last week in the SEC title game. They are from Auburn, Alabama. A record this season of 23 and 9 after a 16 and 1 start. And the Tigers making their seventh NCAA tournament appearance. They were a number one seed in the South region last year, knocked out by Ohio State. And uh, the Creighton University Blue Jays out of Omaha, Nebraska. Representing the Missouri Valley Conference, 23 and 9. Automatic tournament bid with that MVC victory, their 11th tournament appearance. And versus tournament teams, 2 and 2 this season. And our three man referating crew, headed by Donnie Gray, Reggie Greenwood, and Andy Rios. Uh, Vern, I look at Creighton and I think back. I was looking at their record book. Paul Silas, their great rebounder. 
I saw he had 38 rebounds in a game against Centenary, and I felt great because I thought he had the record against LaSalle, which was 30 when I played. Ah, and I you? have to guard him. I used to watch him go up and come down. <laughs> Unfortunately, he had the ball. One of the great players in the history of Creighton basketball. And the Auburn Tigers without Chris Porter. Game one, Midwest region, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Njai and Andy Huss, Alan Huss, go for the tip. Taken and put in the hands of Doc Robertson. And Vernon Lundquist. Great goes, minute, minute. And Njai. Baseline, little quick jumper in and good. And you, you, the philosophy, uh, they're going to try and establish inside burn. They got to pound it and take advantage of NJ on the block. Ryan Sears, the junior from Ankeny, Iowa. Us playing a high post. There's the screen from Donnie Johnson kicking back outside to West. Walker closely guarded by Jay Hurd. They're up on that three point line. This team reverses the ball, they'll use the clock. Very intelligent approach. Donnie Johnson takes the jumper and ties it up. Shooting, name of the game. The club shoots 48% and 42 is a team from three. That's extraordinary. 2-2, two -two. Ryan Sears will pick up Doc Robinson. Into the corner. Fish back, no good. And Jai grab, or McGatney it is, who grabs the rebound. Does not get the roll. Ben Walker for Creighton. An outstanding rebounder for a guard. Walker averaging six rebounds. Nice pass into the low post. Johnson turned around jumper, too strong. And that's where Sears is tough. You shape up, he'll get you the basketball. And Jai. And McCadney's really played good basketball since Chris Porter went out. They'll put him in the low post. He also can step outside. McCadney had a, an outstanding game last Sunday. 15 rebounds in that loss to Arkansas. Second jumper is good. This one by McGadney. Nice little cut to get himself free along the baseline. It's all in the doctor's hands, I think, for Auburn. Get people involved. Whistle and an injury. Uh, running the baseline, you could just see establishing on the little fadeaway, but activity very important. Creating a solid help type defense. You got to run your screens, set them up as the cutter, and then acknowledge with the ball movement. Njai goes to the bench with an apparent injury, and Marquis Daniels, the freshman, number three, comes on for him. And he's getting a lot more minutes as well. They expect a lot out of him down the road. There's the entry pass kick back outside in the first three of the game, can by Ben Walker. How about that little inside out? That's their game. Now Walker, a great football player, Vern, with his seven or eight Big Ten scholarships. So there's a toughness and a touch as well. First three of the ball game, they average making nine per game near the Creighton Blue Jays. How about that, huh, Daniels? Oh my goodness. Marquis Daniels gives Auburn a 7-5 lead. Well, I can see Johnson playing off him. Right, here's West, skip pass in the corner, Sears pumps, and Johnson has it. Guarded by Fishback, baseline move, he traveled. And Sears, once again, the good job getting the ball where it has to be. And they say that Ryan Sears is one of those all-American young guys. And Jai up and walking off an apparent injury that the crowd thought traveling should have been called. Are we in Omaha? <laughs> <laughs> We're close. And that wasn't very close, but deep by step back Fishback. Damon Fishback, who is not shy about taking that shot. Now he oils that piston. He's not afraid to crank it up. Here's Matt West, and Huss gives it off to Sears, takes the jumper for three, cans it. Now that's their favorite little set, screen away, and then slip out to the sideline. A little three-quarter, now they back it up, half court. Ryan Sears averaging 12 points per game, and he's hitting 34% from three-point range for the season. And during a little bit of a matchup now, this is where Doc Robinson has to take over. Heard from the corner, cans a three. As I said, this is where Hurd has to take over. <laughs> <laughs> a pretty good cross court look. The skipper Rue pass. Jay Hurd is starting for Pullman, who uh, 
has uh, been coming off the bench recently. Five of seven for Auburn in the early going. Boy, they are shooting the ball well, both teams. Now the first move to the bench for the Creighton Blue Jays. Kyle Korber, freshman out of Pella, Iowa. Another of those on this team that has a good shooting stroke. And Vern, you're, you're just thinking the same. He's got a great approach to the game because they take away the three in the games as I look during the course of the season, progressing to the end. He puts it on the floor now to go by his guy. There's a little double screen for him. Oh, don't give him those looks. Korber off the mark. Into the hands of McGadney. Here comes Auburn's Doc Robinson. Fishback. Kicks it back outside. Marquis Daniels in the lane. Good defense. Donnie Johnson was there with the block. Should have kicked it out. Got in too deep. Now Sears. He'll pull up, take the jumper, leaner. Air ball. He gets a little heat from the Auburn crowd, but pretty good shooting thus far. As we go to commercial, word for the bench, Njai with a bruised eye, but he will be back. Well, Vern Lundquist, you can relate to this. Terrific outside shooting. A little screen away. This is the reverse action. They line you up on one side, then they go cross court. A little guard around, and Sears ducks behind. A little nylon by the little guy, uh, but well designed and executed. And of course, Dana Altman at K-State, an assistant under Lon Kruger, said he had a great influence on his life as a coach. And it's nice to see him leaving K-State and bringing this club to the NCAA a few times. 41 years of age now in his sixth season and going after his 100th win at Creighton today. And a second straight trip for the Blue Jays. Liven Pyfram is in the lineup now, number 32. 6'11 center out of the Bahamas for Creighton. McGadney. That's Pyfram out on him. He'll take the jumper way outside, in and out. And chased down by Ben Walker. That, that's a tough matchup for Pyfram because he's got to stretch out and play the good shooters on the perimeter. St. Bonaventure with an early lead in Cleveland over Kentucky, as you see. Jimmy Barron's guys, huh? Bob Lanier's alma mater. Walker posting up into the lane, takes the jumper off the glass over Doc Robinson. How about that, Ben? Sky Walker with the kiss. The guards can load it up, Burn. Now Robinson will back it out. Enjoy getting ready to come back on for Auburn. Four of seven for Creighton, Auburn five of eight. Marquis Daniels guarded by Corver, takes the dribble, and they'll come back outside to Robinson. And they run things smoothly when Pullman gets in. He's so active. Nice baseline move here. Oh. Off the glass and good, plus one. Uh, Daniels, they say, top prospect out of high school, starting to feel his way into the lineup. The approach here, avoiding body contact, a little slide by, take the hit, and keep on ticking. But this is just solid when your two guard, your shooting guard can go down, kiss it down with some strength. He's a tough out in there. Daniels, not a good free throw shooter, 50% for the year, and uh, gives you an ample demonstration of why he has problems. Struggle. <laughs> and that's so big all year long within the tournament as well. Scott Pullman is on the floor now. Longtime starter, number 10, who's uh, been coming off the bench in recent weeks. Here's Corver. And in the low post, Pyfram, who is fouled by Njai. Get a complete scouting report on the starting lineups for all 64 tournament teams. Just click on March Mayhem at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online at her keyword CBS Sportsline. And that's one of those nickel-dime fouls that Njai seems to pick up early that hurt him late in the game. And they need his contribution more and more so without Chris Porter. Substitution now. Justin Haynes on the floor for... Creighton replacing Ben Walker. Pyfram, who is a 49% free throw shooter, misses both. Now, now, why would you have a lane violation knowing that Pyfram struggles? I mean, that's part of getting ready, uh, the coaches tell you, and all the anticipation. Don't give him a chance. I mean, it's not horseshoes. <laughs> and big deal. Yeah, it's amazing. So one of three after getting the uh, bonus into the bonus round for Pyfram. Now, Vern, check Pullman out the activity. I mean, he's 
so active without the basketball. Bothered today by a sty in his left eye, so his vision a little clouded. The fellow's telling us that last night. There's the shot short. Ball on the floor. Njai battling for it with Haynes. And Haynes comes out of there. Coleman is back, so is Robinson. from calls for it. Corver will pull up and take the jumper. In and out. Good job by Daniels of getting position and the ball taken away by Njai. And Vern, that's Creighton's game. Push it down. If you identify, kick it back out. Pullman free in the corner. He misses the three, but nice touch by Njai. Now they got size and strength. You got to take advantage. Now Hayes, you mentioned earlier, very strong. He's good with the dribble. He compliments the outside shooting of Creighton. Six point, Auburn lead. Matt West. Robinson defends. Good job by Pullman. Sears tries to save it. They kick it away, and it'll be over and back. That just didn't look pretty for the get go, no. did it? Uh, they struggle, and you can see the speed and denial uh, by Auburn. They are up, checking, making sure you don't get the easy look. Cliff Ellis, a little time on the tape since their Sunday SEC championship game against Arkansas. Auburn losing that game, and Arkansas winning the automatic bid into the NCAA. An exciting game if you uh, saw it on Sunday at CBS down in Atlanta. Zipper screen here. How would you define a zipper screen? Well, the guy in the elbow goes down to the block, and the other guy exchanges spots, comes out high. Okay. I'll accept the answer. Mm -hmm. What did you think I was, a haberdasher? <laughs> Walker. <laughs> in the corner, Haynes back to Huss. Corver, good ball movement to Walker in the corner. And, and not there. Sharp on the floor now for Auburn. Reggie Sharp, number 11. Underneath, Njai. Inside power. It's got to be consistent. And don't go away from it. Eight-point Auburn lead. Under 12 to go first half. A 9-3 Auburn run has given them their biggest lead. And most of it's on the perimeter here. I think with this denial, you got to get to that nice screen to free Corver. Get a little more air under it. Here comes Sharp. He's got Pullman on the right wing. Finds him. Pullman, pump fake. Little baseline drive, and he will get the basket and go to the line. With feeling. So much for the sty in your eye, huh? He's fun to watch because he takes advantage of every opportunity. He being Pullman. Understands how to get free. Once he gets it, he can penetrate. He can go hard to the basket. He's got a perimeter game, but also a little touch and feeling around the tin. The little guy with the big Valentine. Now, you'd buy cookies from him, wouldn't you? OP look. I mean, choir boy. And get as competitive as they can be. And as we go to break, give that previous basket to McGadney instead of Enjoy. An 11 point Auburn lead. to go in the first half and Creighton down 22-11 fine shooting start for the uh, Auburn Tigers. Well when you think of the Southeastern Conference it's so deep and this club is so good defensively Auburn that's part of the dilemma they're forcing Creighton into some tough situations they're gonna have to be patient and obviously screening is of paramount importance when they run their offense. Walker in the lane gets it pretty good huh if you can't get a post up use a dribble and here the full court pressure Johnson on the ball with the big hands they got a five and that's how you stimulate it Dana at K State he was telling me man to man no traps now at Creighton he's adjusted the type of players he has different switches different locations of pressure and we got a foul away from the ball and this is Walker I mean that's one of those small change as a coach during the game you look around and say why uh, but cleaning it up early here third team foul on Creighton it's very tough to look over the top they get the initial trap and you see a little trap in later in the day too with Marlon there's Reggie Sharp, number 11, guarded by Sears, number 5. 
There's the switch with Huss. Gets back to guard Njai. Gadney, right side, Daniels. They're really trying to establish that high low. Here's a look at the help from the rear by Haynes, Haynes comes over. Yep. And they get it back to McGatton for three. Yes. Uh, that's a that's two. really basic yep. basketball though. Get it in. Uh, good gamble by Haynes trying to help out and then the kick back out. McGadney cans it at his foot on the line. So it's a two-point basket and a 26-13 Auburn lead. Now Creighton's got to stay in touch. They lose the dribble the last trip. They got to continue, particularly with the hugging on the perimeter. Johnson, Walker cuts. There's their, one of their favorite plays as well. Though. And it worked the first time. Good rebound here by Hayes. Up and no. I thought it was offensive interference, didn't you? That was not called, but a foul was. Wow. And the foul on Donnie Johnson. That may have gone in, Vern, if they, if they hadn't touched it. Now watch this one. Look at this now. This may have hung around there. Why yeah. touch it? And that was a Blue Jay hand. Darrell Taylor makes his first appearance in the ball game, number 23. A 6 3 guard from Bridgeport, Connecticut for Creighton. And he'll pick up Reggie Sharp, just shy of the midcourt line. Here's Pullman. Taylor really hustles. In. His handle's a little bit of a question, Vern. Defense, he, he's pretty good at stealing the basketball, so maybe a little spurt from that end for Creighton. 24-13, under 10 to go. First half of play. Back outside, McGadney. Walker had left him, and McGadney misses this one. Huss comes down with the rebound. Creighton needs a spark here. It's usually the guards that provide the lift. Huss, right side to Taylor. And there's a fine job by Pullman to step into the passing lane, but then uh, Taylor gets it back. Whoa, a little behind Pretty. the back. Huss and the foul underneath. Now, Huss doesn't really look for his shot that much. I thought maybe he should have turned the gun up strong. He was looking to kick it out. But once again, the ability to get the some steals. Taylor that time at the half court ignites it. Foul is on McGadney, his first. Ryan Sears, the junior from Ankeny, Iowa, inbounds. Now for real Taylor. Nice back pass. The other deny out there, Palm does a great job. You might, and look at all the assistants off the basketball. Good, solid stance. Little pick and roll with Walker and Sears, and Sears comes left side. The switch was sharp on him now. Huss. Little soft jump hook way off the mark. Got to get something inside. Not a bad opportunity there. And McCadney really jamming it up defensively. And helping on the centers, on the cutters. 24-13, 8.35 to go first half of play. On the line, turnover. That is the third Auburn turnover. Uh, Dana checking his card out over the sideline, what might work. Uh, his team now struggling to get any rhythm, don't you feel? Yes. Yeah, and there's an absence of energy. Yeah, and they've got the big supporting crowd here. What they say, six hours? Yes. Omaha, Minneapolis. Could you stand me that long? <laughs> I'll take you down there. Not a lot of mountains twixt here and there. <laughs> Let's reverse it. Here's the X off the center. And this is their favorite little play. Huss. Yes. They run some great stuff. You screen and then drift. And Huss able to provide a lift out there. Alan Huss, who averages only four, gets two. 8.05 to go. Here's Pullman. Bit of a trap. McGadney. Too strong, and the rebound for Sears. Creighton wants to run. Corver's over the left side. They put it to Taylor's hands. Got it. They can score in a hurry. Cliff Ellis knows that. 30-second timeout is called. Well, all of a sudden, they can ignite Creighton, and that's Cliff is not happy with the defense. Got to get back and identify. Time called, 24-18.
Greg Gumbel, Clark Kellogg in New York. We'll keep you updated on what's happening in your game, but let's take you around the country and tell you what's happening elsewhere. First stop, Salt Lake City, Indiana State taking on the Texas Longhorns, and Sycamores are doing something that's going to come back and bite them, Clark. They're turning the ball over early. Yeah, you can't turn it over. You've got to squeeze that orange. Turnovers are kind of like breakfast. If you do it too much and miss breakfast too much, it's going to come back to cause you problems the rest of the day. And Texas, though, struggling to get the ball into Chris Mim. He's their big guy inside. Indiana State doing a nice job defensively, and that's what they've hung their hat on all year long is their ability to force people out of what they want to do offensively. I'm sure Indiana State, too, might just be a little case of nerves because you know they're happy to be here. Exactly, and I talked about that before we got on the air. I talked a little bit about how emotion management would be key, especially for teams that haven't been here at all or have not been here in recent years. Larry Bird went through an entire Hall of Fame career in the NBA since the time, the last time that the Indiana State has been in the NCAA tournament. And a whistle on the court will take the opportunity to send you over to the McHale Center in Tucson, where Winthrop is taking on the Oklahoma Sooners. And Winthrop, the Big South champions, they're going to have to come up with a heck of a game. Kelvin Sampson's team can put points on the board. They really can. Both of these teams like to play fast. Both of these teams like to shoot the three-point shot. One of the keys for Winthrop is they've got to make sure they get good shots every trip down, and they need to keep the pace fast. They want to try to score not only on three-pointers, but also a little bit off their defense. They're going to need someone other than Greg Lewis to score, too. He has all seven of the Eagles' points so far. Well, they've got three or four other guys that can shoot the three-point shot, and again, in their case, maybe a little bit of early nervousness part of their problem early on, and yet they only trail by two. The Oklahoma Sooners, the number three seed in the West, and Winthrop, the number 14 seed. And as you see there, it is a two-point lead for the Sooners. Meanwhile, at the CSU Convocation Center in Cleveland, Ohio, Midwest regional action between St. Bonaventure and the Kentucky Wildcats. St. Bonnie's holding their own very well so far today. I mentioned to you, Clark, they couldn't be as bad as they looked in their championship game last weekend. Well, they have hit a little bit of a drought. They once led this game 23 to 13, and they've been parked in the mid-20s for about five minutes. Tayshawn Prince for Kentucky, who I think, Greg, is their key guy. He's a versatile player. He's making three-pointers, three or four from behind the three point line for 11 points. Kentucky has to ride his versatility to go along with the strength of McGlure and Kamara inside. You mentioned that big lead St. Bonaventure's had and then Kentucky went on a 15 to 2 run but uh, both of these teams shooting very well out of the gate. And that's key for Kentucky on the season only 29 percent from behind the three point line low 40s overall in terms of their field goal percentage. If they shoot it well, they've got a chance to move on. All right, Clark, we'll keep you updated. Let's go back to Minneapolis. Vern Lundquist and Bill Raftery. Auburn Tigers leading 29-18, 6.44 to go. Auburn hitting 60%. 7 of 17 for the Creighton Blue Jays, 12 of 20 for Auburn thus far, and the front court outscoring Creighton's 15 to 5. That's not really a shot. No, nope, not at all. And, and what is a surprise is this full court press because Cliff Ellis said, with Porter gone, I'm not going to stretch the floor. Never believe a coach. <laughs> and they get they close the timeout and a little rag time here. Ryan Sears brings it across. He's picked up by Daniels. Uh, Jay Hurd on Terrell Taylor. <laughs> Sears back outside Taylor who looks inside for Pfeiffer turn around and McGadney was there defensively that you know he's a sneaky good defender because he also plays other people he jams up the lane at that time individually sound 624 to go first half time has been called 29-18 Auburn leading it by 11 over Creighton. Monday on CBS, he's got a great wife, some really cool friends, and a hit show on CBS. Three reasons why it's good to be king. Kevin James is the king of Queens Monday on CBS. With a king of Midtown, I'm Vern Lundquist. <laughs> <laughs> or downtown or whatever oh, you're yeah, giving. exactly. And All around New York. And, and what, what's interesting, both clubs going, reaching into their bag of tricks. Three-quarter court press here after initially that nice hands here. Tell, he's amazing how he gets his hands on the ball. Darrell Taylor mm -hmm. slapped that one back. And Daniels will inbound it again. But Dana always seems to have a trick off a of timeout, so we've certainly had a few early here. 
Dana Altman, the sixth year head coach at Creighton. Ooh. Pass on the baseline. Whoops. And Doc was running to the corner, and that's just not the experience that Daniels is going to be a terrific player, I think. At that time, they're running something. He anticipated a back cut towards the hole, and that's part of learning. And you can just see he wanted to go down the end of the bench. The coach <laughs> right. said, come on up here. Let's have a little conversation. <laughs> come on to me, big fella. Mamadou Njai replaces Marquis Daniels. 29-18, under six to go first half of play. Creighton and Auburn. This is a number seven seed against a number 10. Tigers with that 16 and one start and then slumping after they lost Porter. And trying to get Sears along the baseline. And Doc really got the puppies right after him. Ivan Pfeiffer, Corver. Good batter in the low post. Great Shot clock at three. Little runner off the glass. Oh, oh. do I love you? <laughs> A little kiss. Ryan Sears lighting it up. Ryan Sears gets two. And the lead is nine. Now Pyfram continues. And there's Robinson. Short into the hands of West. Ryan Sears will come across the timeline. Kicks it in the corner for Taylor. Rebound and Jai. Auburn. And Robinson has it. He does a nice job keeping those elbows up. The ball up high, and Jai. You're not going to swipe it away. And Jai, a seven-footer from Dakar, Senegal. Azola's giving them some problems. They haven't been able to get it to the right spot and turn and kick. Good movement here. Jay Hurd, that's for three. Thunder and Hurd. He's been lighting it up early the last few games. Well, he played 59 minutes in regular season SEC play, and then Cliff Ellis decided to start him, and he has been a big contributor in the last three, four games. High from baseline jumper is good. Not bad. And good poise defensively by NJ. Stayed on the floor. Any of that helps Creighton because it'll loosen up just a little bit the outside guys. Now Robinson taking his time. Doc Robinson, Selma, Alabama. Terrell Taylor goes for the steal and gets the foul. Well, we mentioned the inability. Uh, over not comfortable against the zone. Will they find a little spot here along the baseline? And Jay Hurd uh, able to get the puppy set. And you can just see the hold on the box by Njai. Pipe from not able to get out. So good execution that trip. I think if they can get it to the foul line and distribute, whether it's down low or to the corner, it'll help Cliff's team. Cliff Ellis, the coach of uh, Auburn, just sent Scott Pullman back on the floor. And Ben Walker returns to great number four. The Gatton up pretty. Nice pass underneath the Njai. Basket and a free throw. And Cliff looks at his notes on the sideline. The scatter report, you're not familiar with the team. You're prying. You're trying to find out. But uh, that foul line area has been vulnerable. There it is. It's like doing homework. Pop in, look low. Good job by Njai. Once again, doesn't bring the ball down until he has to thrust forward. Excellent execution. That was on Huss, his first. Seventh team foul. Three-point play for Mamadou Njai. And the Auburn Tigers up by 13. Time call. This is Armin Katayan back in Minneapolis with Charles Fishback, whose son, Damian, plays on the Auburn team. There's a nice little connection here, though, with Coach Ellis. You played for Coach Ellis back in the mid or early 70s when he was a coach at Cumberland College. What was that like, and what did you tell Damon about uh, his decision to come to Auburn? Well, I, I played for coach, and we had a good experience. And my wife went to school at Cumberland, and I went to school there. We both knew Coach Ellis, and we told Damon that he would treat him fair, and we told him that it'd be a winning program. So those were major factors. All right, thank you. Back to you, Vern. All right, Armin. I think that was a pretty good decision. Well, it, just, it sure was. And Mr. Basketball, too, in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, so that's a tough decision for a guy like that to go out of state in that hotbed of basketball. Largest lead in the first half for Auburn now. Here's Corver, and he'll jumper, take the jumper from three over the top, and out of bounds. And he's fighting himself just a little bit. He's getting, he's got three good looks. He just stroke it. And sometimes you don't get enough legs in it. Corver 0 for 4 so far in the first half. 35-22. There's Fishback. Yes. Proud. Danny's proud. Tee it up. 
I should have said to Armin, find out if his father liked to shoot as much as the son <laughs> who likes to jack it up. 16 point lead. He could be a better choreographer, huh? Talk to the father, the son strokes it. It's almost planned, huh? Yeah, Bob, Bobby Barnes back on top of his game. Our producer in the front. Here's West. Corver, and again misfires. He's 0 for 5, and that one chased into the Auburn bench. And they're not sure here. Either official, I don't think they got a good shot of which way it's going. Cliff Ellis didn't like the physicalness as they got close to the bench. And what you do here is you try and ward off as West does, and he obviously fouled, but that's part of the game. Going to that sideline, get the apple. Matt West, a senior who played high school ball at West Side High in Omaha. Kick it into the corner for Huss. Rims in and out. Coming up on Penn's Oil at the half, Greg Gummel and Clark Kellogg get you updated on all the tournament news, all the scores and highlights, plus a live look at all the action going on in the NCAA tournament. Penn's Oil at the half. Foul was called on Doc Robinson, his first. And he had to check out underneath on Walker. Ooh, he didn't want that. No. But when you're struggling, he's got a big <laughs> smile. Who loves your baby, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Planned it all the way. <laughs> Give me a little smooch, will you, Hunt? <laughs> Corver gets three, 37-25. The zone has kept Coleman a distance. Gadney back to Pullman, the shot clock at 10. 149 to go before the break, 37-25. Good shot. Steps. The arena scoreboard had 37-25. Our score is the correct one, 38-25. Well, the, the ability to shoot attracts people. Great challenge and closeout. Tough angle, a little kiss. Uh, keep you humming. Sears. Corbett closely guarded by McGadney. Huss passes on the shot, gets it left. Now Ben Walker. Robinson chesting him up. Six on the shot clock. West will take the jumper. Not there. Loose ball. Picked up by Doc Robinson. Good hustle by Pullman. Fish back, yes, for three more. Oh, oh. Get it up quickly. Auburn shooting the ball very well, final minute first half, and they have a 16-point lead, 41-25 over Creighton. And Vern, it's really been their defense, though, extending on the perimeter shooting of Creighton, making it tough, forcing them out of their offense, forcing dribble opportunities. Pre presentation by Enjai is solid on that end. Saw the leading scores. Here's Robinson. It's rejected by Corbett. And Creighton comes back across the timeline. 41-25. Not a bad play by Enzai. Corver with the counter. Probably a one-shot situation here. Even they're driving, they can't free up the three-point shooter without a good, solid closeout. Walker oh, off the glass, no, and Njai was there and at the half. The Auburn Tigers enjoy a 41-25 lead. And shoots 62 percent of the first half we check in with Armin Fayette. Thanks Vern. Coach, strong effort on the defensive end and you held their starting guards to just 12 points. Well I think the key is, is making sure you sustain and maintain the defense for the three-point shot with Creighton and uh, fortunately for us the three-point shots have fallen so uh, we've been able to hit shots and we've been able to keep them out of what they normally do but it's still another half and with the three-point barrage anything can happen we've just got to come back out play 20 more minutes of hard-nosed defense. All right, coach. Thanks a lot, Vern. All right, Armin, thank you. Halftime in Minneapolis. The Auburn Tigers enjoying the first half.
Pennzoil at the half is next. Halftime and CBS Sports coverage of the men's NCAA tournament will continue after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship is sponsored by the Chevy Monte Carlo, Pizza Hut, American Express, and by Salomon Smith Barney. And a quick correction of the scores. We went to break. One of those threes from Fishback became a two instead of a three. So it's 40 25, and we check in with Armand Katea. Coach, you're normally the second best three point shooting team in the country, 41 8, just 27% and so far in the first half. Well, our guys are a little tight, and uh, we're playing a little soft on the defensive end. Uh, hopefully, we'll be a little more aggressive this half, and uh, shots will start falling. They shot the ball really well, but our defense was really soft. All right, Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck. That just a moment ago, and now Creighton has the ball as we begin the second half. Uh, you, can, you, you just see Auburn attacking the burn. They've got to find a way to get it inside, whether it's the dribble or screening and getting to the box. Donnie Johnson off the dribble. Oh, beautiful. How about that one? What a terrific move. On cue. Donnie. And the trap in the backcourt. Robinson gets it into the hands of McGatney. Sears hustles back. And Doc Robinson now will settle things down. Heard. And Robinson, Njai, guarded by Ellen Huss. Mamadou Njai. A little bit of a carry, bird. Just a little. Oh, my goodness. Put the luggage down. 40-27. <laughs> and in the first half, you see Auburn hitting 62%. And this normally fine shooting three-point team from Creighton. Uh, Armin just uh, made reference to that with Dana Altman. 4-15. That does not mean they won't quit firing. No, no, and, and the one thing nice said, Doc, it's a nice screen. You've got to come over the top, and you've got to show on the doctor his prescription and remedy. Doc Robinson gets two. But the finish is throwing Creighton. Get to the goal somehow, and then get the press going just to generate some enthusiasm. Walker. And a foul on Auburn underneath. A little shove down the bottom. I think Jay Hurd got a little piece of him. Foul is on Hurd, his first. I spent a little time with Chuck Galina, the sports information director uh, at Auburn, and he was saying the team is starting to come together. And I guess what Cliff was striving for after the Chris Porter episode. You know, who are we? Where are we going to go to find a replacement? Is it going to be a team effort? And they seem to have understood now a little inside game. Well, they really kind of regrouped. Here comes Fishback in the SEC tournament. They, they sure did a nice little look here. I didn't quite get it to McCadney. Uh, the Arkansas game, Arkansas played to a terrific basketball game, and I think Auburn got themselves back, understand one another a lot more than they did going into the tournament. Might recall many of you that on the eve of a visit to Florida, the night before the team learned that Chris Porter had been ruled ineligible, they went out the next day and were absolutely destroyed. Mm -hmm. And a little turnaround here, establishing McCadney, a tough, great control, I mean, he's impressive physically. You might call him a load, but we don't want to offend the family. <laughs> uh, the drop step, <laughs> a knock down and a chance for three. Uh, that, that is just solid inside play. So you got, that's what they found inside with McCandy and Enjai to replace Porter. Well, in the last five games, McCandy with 14-point uh, average does not get the three here. 45-27 opening moments of the second half. The seventh seeded Auburn Tigers here. Sears puts it up and will go to the free throw line. Oh, and how about the body control? He lost a little rubber here. It's not Indianapolis. A little, as he turns the corner, you see the feet go out from under, but the presence to deliver and take the hit as well. And on the sideline, Dana just pretty excited. He needs something to get the energy level up for his club. Dana Altman, the coach, looks on. Second foul on Doc Robinson. And uh, Dana Altman will now send Terrell Taylor on the floor, replacing Ben Walker. 41 year old up in his sixth season at Great. And we have a, a mutual friend, Jimmy Kerwin, uh, who worked with him at K State, and a Western Illinois coach. And 
just knew he would be an excellent coach. At K-State did a good job. I think he's even a better coach now from that experience. Now, Doc Robinson guarded by Sears after the missed free throw. And Justin Haynes, who's just on the floor, goes for the steal, does not get it. Jay Hurd shot off the front rim. Haynes goes up, grabs the rebound. Here comes Creighton. Left side, West for three. Got it. Early offense. And they want the pressure. Nice give by Sears. The puppy set by West. Perfect trap there, Vern. Creighton bench up, sensing they might be on the verge of a run here. They've got the lead to 13. Switch, Here's where you got to pound it in, make sure you get to the foul line at least. Nice job at ball denial. Great defense. Donnie Johnson knocked that one away. Here comes Creighton. And they're a scrambling, hustling team as they come up with that loose ball. Donnie Johnson. Pretty. Underneath. Oh. Beauty. Oh, Taylor made by Johnson. And Cliff with the timeout. He can see some slippage. A nice halftime adjustments by Creighton. Uh, Vern, you got to see the unselfish play. It's so attractive. Make the threes. Get the defense. They're back. 7-0 Creighton run has cut the lead to 11 near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game. We'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Today, Chevy has contributed over $8 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. 45-34. Harbin with a 15-point halftime lead. It's now 11. Doc Robinson, Damian Fishback, Njai, McGadney and Scott Pullman's now on the floor, number 10. And a little small change by Hayes. Is that who they get? Mm. A little body check, a big physical. Kevin Justin McKenna. Haynes. Kevin McKenna was telling me Justin Haynes bench presses 375 pounds. Ooh, now that's the that's two of us together. Out of, that's out of our league. That, that, that sure is. <laughs> that's like some of your football guys that you speak to during the year. He is a low. That is impressive. Haynes guarding McGadney. And that's what they need, some physical play. McGadney, nice spin out. Creighton has missed only one in this half. Here's a good job by Sears. Keeps it in play and drives it all the way. Coleman fouls him. Ryan Sears will go to the free throw line. Oh, well, there's the guy for that club. MVP. The NBC tournament. Good reaction. Played with a torn tendon. A lot of courage in the little guy and his ability both to finish and find people is extraordinary. Here he doesn't knock it down, but he gets to the free throw. You see the frustration bending. Ryan Sears with that torn tendon in the ring finger on his left hand, so he's wearing a splint. It's something that uh, never leaves his finger. He is a theology student. And they're talking to their staff. They just said he's the real deal. Right. And very solid human being, giving, caring. Getting it off. Sears has nine and earns a rest. And a little pat on the back from his coach, Dana Altman. Well, he's one of those guys you got to get out as you check this run out. Nine zip. He, he's going to give everything while he's out there, so you've got to adjust as a staff. Make sure you spell him. A single digit lead now for the Auburn Tigers. Coleman, guarded by Matt West. There's the pick from Injon. The switch, Johnson. Now West gets back. Fishback, back outside to Doc Robinson. See, right about now, they all know what the others can do. They're playing the shooters. They're forcing guys to dribble. Coleman to Njai. Goes baseline. Nice move. He's got some game in there. He's got a little jump hook on either box, a little turnaround jumper. And you can see he gets up so high, nobody's going to deter. Eight points for Njai. He's perfect from the field. Four of four. Here's oh. Rejected. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was with a message. <laughs> oh, let's hope he's okay. He's yeah. down. Yeah. Oh, oh, he great. No, no, he's keeping him down. Oh, he's just deep. He looks okay. And Doc Robin, well, he's the healer. Doc, it step up. Uh, I've people. got to check your impression of okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is pretty okay if you're Robert. Solid. Well, unfortunately, this is the second Nick for Enjai. 
as he gets up and elevates, he's going to come down and leave on the left ankle. You can just see down there stepping. You can just see the pain as he goes right down, protecting his left side. Uh, they're working on him on the bench, stretching. They're going to readjust the tape as well. He, he's played very well, I think. They need him out the floor. Very small without him. They are small. McGadney now moves into the post, and Damian Fishback also on the floor. Johnson. That's going to be offensive. And that's the same play that's been effective early in the game for Creighton. Johnson screens and then steps away pretty well executed. Unfortunately, they got a little too close and got the bank. And Donnie Johnson picks up his third foul. Mm. Now the pressure, Corver guards the inbound pass, and they throw it away. Sears has it. Uh, you're going to see that press every time they score now, Creighton, I think. They feel they can get some, uh, get some energy and get the job done. Into the hands of Justin Haynes. Now back to Sears. Holman's there trying to get in the passing lane. And that's the same play. See that pass as long as the center helps out defensively. And Sears off the screen from Johnson. Oh, he doesn't have a catalog, but he can deliver. Volumes. Another turnover. Here's Walker with the margin at eight. Corver. Not there. Can't find his stroke today. Well, he can't. He's got to just stretch that arm out. Now Sears on the almost errant pass. Good denial here. Five second count. Timeout is called by Sears. Great call to timeout and 30 second timeout. The score update from the West Region. Creighton has cut into the Auburn lead. It was 15 at the half. It's only eight now. We'll be back. 14.55 to go in the second half. Creighton down by 15 at the halftime. They've hit from outside. They are a good perimeter shooting team, and their pressure defense off made baskets has uh, been effective. Well, they've gotten themselves in the game because the push offensively has been there. Also complimenting the pressure. Walker, oh boy. While well, we said football early, you can see that shoulder there. Maybe a little pratfall as well. But right now, this is an opportunity to step it up. Doc Robinson not on the floor. They really don't have the point situation in hand. Mamadou Njai is up on the bench, injured a couple of moments ago. He's going to give it a go. He's getting ready to come back in. There's the miss from Jay Hurd, and Sears has it. And a chance to carve further into the lead. Horber <laughs> almost <laughs> missed the count. Well, he is not himself, but maybe that'll loosen him up. Here's a perfect trap if they get a step up. Pullman. Donnie Johnson just picked up his Ooh. fourth foul. Oh, and he didn't have to. All he had to do was get sidelined and force it to the middle. People were going to recover. Hustle be in for him. That changes things uh, for Dana Altman. How about this, Vern? A little pratfall, I would think, but you can see the strength and the ability. This is because the threes are being played. And Corver, oh, please go down. Uh, he's been struggling. Well, he's a three-point expert, but not a three-foot expert. No, no, that was a time. Maybe he was looking for Enjai. Fishback. Yes, that's for three. And Taylor on him. Just a little too small a challenge. 14 points for Damian Fishback. And it's 52-43. Automatic switching on Corver on the pop-out makes it tough for him to get an open look. Big rebound. Taylor makes it easy. Offense. Yeah, Donnie Gray standing right there. He was set up for a half hour. I was in line first. You've got to use some judgment as you get into the lane there. Uh, what looks like an open area, Auburn pretty good at reacting. Uh, Taylor gets the, the knock on that particular play. But how about the ability of Walker to rebound? It's just extraordinary. Charlie Bell's one of the best offensive rebounders, I think, in the country from Michigan State. And they feel he's pretty good, too, Walker, up in the rankings. Holman, oh, it's rejected by Walker. Said he walked, I think, before the ball was yes. deflected out of bounds. They are rattled, and they're not getting anybody in the middle of the pressure. They could actually turn it, Auburn, into their favor. If they get it over the top and go, they would have numbers. 11 turnovers. 
Spots up for the three. There it is. A little nylon. He is a good-looking freshman. He struggled, but hanging tough. Shooters, don't worry about it, Fern. Robinson gets it to fish back. Now they come to Pullman. He pulls up and takes the three. So that's all they have to do. Now Clippers saying, get back. Just get over the top, Auburn. And that'll force Creighton into maybe a half-court pressure situation. Wow. Sears, no. Robinson clears it for Auburn. Yeah, quick jack. He was not under total control. Now fish back. Pullman again, short. Rebound, Allen Huss. And Sears right there on him. Pullman's got to run him around. Fatigue, a nice look here. Nice cut, Corver. Corver kicks it back outside. Got it. Tough. A little early onions. Oh, did they go without it? Now Reggie Sharp. Sears has 15 points. And the trap near side. Here's Doc Robinson, the senior. Pullman again. Nice pass underneath, but too many bodies there. Well, they are hustling. Has Sears down on the bottom. Nice slide in the passing lane to deflect it. But how about this one? A little step and go by Corver. They're denying him on the wing. They just couldn't stay with him. Fish back. The kick back out. And Sears on the money. Thus far in the game. Shooting percentages 62 and 44. Holman, no. Injai. Got it. Deflected by Haynes, but a foul is called. Oh, he, Dana Altman, I've never seen him that excited. He is furious. Oh, my goodness. He thought Hayes got all of it. Of course, there's a pretty good relationship, which we'll get to in a moment, as, as Hayes thinks he's got all basketball, and I think he's right if they call it on him. And when he went to... Re well, Dave, because he enjoys it. Uh, Dana Altman went to recruit Justin Hayes. He was there in time, but he didn't want to go to the house. So he took a stop for a Coca-Cola, and they went down. The family went down to pick him up. They were worried he got in trouble. So I mean, nice friendship between the coach and his recruit. Of course, the rest is history. Injai shoots one more. Now uh, McGadney's going to come back on the floor for Auburn, replacing Damian Fishback. 54-49, 12.02 to go. A furious charge by Creighton trying to climb back in, and they have. Now Haynes. Colder, back on the floor, the pre-med student. And Matt West. Here's their X off the high post. This is where he's improved, Barry. Put it on the floor a little bit. Got to reverse McCann. He could beat him, I think. Nice post by Huss. Yes, it was. Now they kick it back outside for West. No. And a foul underneath on Auburn. I think it may be Doc Robinson trying to check out. Instead, it's called on Reggie Sharp. Time called, 54-49. The seven seed out of the SEC leads the 10 seed out of the MVC. 54-49 thus far in the tournament. On day one, three teams making their first ever appearance this weekend. UNC Wilmington, Central Connecticut State, whom we will see here in the next game, and Southeast Missouri State. The Big Ten and Big 12, six teams each. All right, now I think it's got to be point. Nice, quick jack on the out of bounds. You can see Auburn, not as aggressive defensively. A little run out with numbers. Bowman. Puts it in the hands of Sharp, gets a return, and takes a three. Nope, short. Ryan Sears clears it. And now Sears. Over the freshman, Matt West, the senior from Omaha. Doc Robinson got a tough matchup with Hayes if he goes to the rim. Alan Huss, nice job of backing in. Enjai is there, and Huss misses two. Haynes clears it. Back for Sears for three. No. And Njai with a rebound. Firing a couple of elbows. Yeah, they're not, not afraid. Now you can see Hayes down there with Doc Robinson. If they could establish something that way. Allen Huss missing from close range twice. Now Robinson. In the lane. Njai. Saved it. Ten on the shot clock. Way outside, yes, 
the caddy a little step back jack but he can be so tough down low and then step out with touch McGadney into double figures with 11. We mentioned a while ago he's averaging 14 in the last five. Shark goes for the steal. Sears gets it back. There's the screen from Huss. The little side pick and roll back for the entry pass. And Mamadou Njai is there to uh, take it away. Huss may have grabbed him too. We can see over and stepped up to D. Now the problem with Creighton is you all this energy to get back in now. You're struggling back to eight points right now. And Dana Altman's going to his bench. Live and Pfeiffer getting ready to come on. Cleared by Corver. And Sears. And Sears is always looking ahead. That's why they make those threes. Corver with the jumper. In and out. MJ with a rebound. And boy, he does put those bows out there. <laughs> Eight rebounds. Mamadou MJ. And we've uh, gone under the 10 minute mark. Uh, Creighton shot the ball real well this half. They're going to continue that, but this is the end. They may have some problems as you get fatigued. You stop guarding as yeah, well. You kind of get a sense, Bill, but they've run out of energy. It does it, and that's why the subs. I think Dana alertly versus his staff over there. Alan Huss is out. Corbett is out. A little bit of a team effort. Uh, his friend of mine, Kevin McKenna, helping out at the other end. Former Creighton player. You know, by the way, Kevin, one of those guys that. A ring as a Valley title, CBA title, NBA title. How about that? He was with the Lakers. He's got more rings than he has fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson. 9.07 to go. Creighton makes you take your time on offense, too. There's the screen, and Robinson's fired off the front rim. Terrell Taylor clears it for Creighton. He's got Haynes' right side. Justin Haynes, Robinson there to defend. Back to Walker for three. Nope. They've gone cold all of a sudden. Out of bounds. And it will be Auburn ball. Beginning Tuesday, April 4th, CBS presents an extraordinary television event. Jason Gedrick stars in Falcone, the FBI's best agent, going deeper into the mob than anyone's been before. Don't miss this compelling new drama, Falcone, coming to CBS Tuesday, April the 4th. And Vern, good piece of officiating. They got it organized, got the right call. But this press, not as relentless now. It's backing up. You have to be solid and check out and rebound. That was a big concern for Dana coming in here. Rebounding by Creighton. Mamadou Njai, Pfeiffer guards him. Njai off the back rim, chased down by Damian Fishback. That's the one you gotta get. Robinson prowls the lane. Ooh, Jay Hurd. Ah, beautiful job by Ryan Sears. He doesn't back off. Hurd much stronger using that body, the little extra weight he came in with. Uh, but this is just heads up play. You've seen Sears do this consistently all game. And in some of the tapes you look at, he's an all out hustle guy. You love them on your team. Ryan Sears. The junior, a six-footer, 180-pounder from Ankeny, Iowa. And we've seen him excel at both ends of the court today. Very feisty and competitive. Side pick and roll to a stagger on the other side for Sears. Good defense by Auburn. Ben Walker. Sears, catch and release, air ball. Well, he's got that thing cocked quickly. Didn't take him long to launch that one. Time has been called. 57-49. Great trail by 15 at the half. They climb back to within four, but now find themselves trailing 57 49 and they just seem to have run out of energy how often have you seen a team get back in it get close and just can't get over that obstacle that, right now i'm sure pleading in the huddle a lot of rotations from the bench maybe to get some energy some life in the game they get a break here getting the ball back sears inbounds into the hands of corver the shot clock at five in the corner walker yes how about that? Off the timeout. Drive, draw, deliver. Just inside the arc, so it's a two-point play. Now McGadney. And the pressure after the made basket applied, but not 
as energized as it was before. Now, they really don't have a middle defense either. Guys stepping up to get another trap. It's one and done, generally. 7.15 to go in this first round encounter. Auburn and Creighton. A fish back down in the box. They ran a nice play to get him down there, and then they get the basketball to him. Shot clock at eight. Robinson, little runner in the lane. Did not quite get the roll, and a foul is going to be called in the backcourt on Damian Fishback. And he didn't like to call it all, but that's what Creighton has to do. Step it up, be physical, get after the basketball on missed shots. Doc Robinson, they love to run that clear for him, but how about this drive, draw, and kick? Sears, I mean, Walker able to stretch out because everybody concentrate on the penetrating Brian Sears. Now Dana Altman has decided to go for it now. 6.54 to go, and Donnie Johnson back on the floor playing with four fouls. There's nothing to play, hold the floor, right? He's just got to play within himself and make sure he checks out. He wears number 44 in blue. Here's Walker. Nice move on the baseline. Beautiful. Well, you can see he's very comfortable down there. And Doc Robinson is a good defender, not as comfortable defending in the box area. Ball kicked out of bounds by Clayton Corver. Well, post it up, a football player with a body we'd all die for. Able to turn the corner and just shit defenders. Cliff Ellis has sent Mamadou Njai back on the floor, the seven-footer, number 34. And they gave him a new shot clock saying it was a kick. Six and a half to go. Fresh 35. And Fishback will inbound. And the different looks now. They front everybody and leave Fishback alone, the inbounder. And you see right down in the baseline, he's all alone. So they've got a gambling guy now, a free safety on the floor. See three against two? Our game, a four-point game. St. Bonaventure in Kentucky tied at 57 with a couple of minutes remaining in that first-round encounter in Cleveland. Here's Pullman. Ooh. And Johnson playing with five fouls <laughs> was dangerously close. He sure was. 57-53. This is as close as Creighton has been. They've been within four twice now in the second half. Get fish back the ball down on the block. There you are. Nice and a block. What? He's too big. He's got Taylor on him. Nice read by the doctor. Fish back with 16. Julius Doc Robinson. Pretty steady point guard. Walker off the dribble. Finds Johnson, not there. And it comes down in the hands of Doc Robinson. Great qualities, too, for lead guard. Coleman. 5.24 to go. Sharp. Robinson. Little pick. Screen, runner in the lane, oh, got it. What a wise play. Uh, that's the, almost like the open. That play, he's got a great ability, almost negates the help on the pick and roll. Sheds them as he turns down the lane. Five to go. The lead is eight. Kyle Corbin. Terrell Taylor across the lane. Now Walker flashes. Coleman goes for the steal. Sears puts it in the hands of Taylor. Got it. How about the kick by Sears? The quick as Pullman tried to gamble the kick. 30-second timeout call by Creighton. 5-point Auburn lead, 4.41 to go. First round encounter in the Midwest here in Minneapolis. And let's take a look at the data bank. The last Missouri Valley Conference team to reach the final four had a guy named Larry Bird leading the way. <laughs> a great final. Indiana State back in the tournament this year. And they are trailing the Texas Longhorns out in Salt Lake 54-44 in their first round game. Sears. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> You yeah, there's need, nothing to do but applaud. You don't need a broom with him around. Ah. Send the janitor home. He just leaves it all on the table. And almost coming up with it. That's just great effort. 4.35 to go in regulation. Doc Robinson will bring it up. Walker.
Robinson guarded by Walker. Sharp, Robinson, Njai, Fishback, and Pullman on the floor for Auburn. Same play. Here we go. The runner again. He's short with this this time. But well, possession. They get the rebound and a fresh 35. And that's what's been the downfall of Creighton. Key little misses. Don't come up with it and go the other way. Under four. Doc Robinson again. They really negated their offense. All the dribble drive by Doc. Off the glass this time. Enjai with the putback. And he is fouled on the run of the line. Can't give up three shots. Uh, three opportunities like that. Down the stretch here. Fatigue, part of the problem. Auburn matching their defensive, the defensive prowess of Creighton. But here, the quick jack under pressure. The third opportunity hitting the glass. And Enjai able to step to the line. And that's devastating. Enjai misses the first. And St. Bonaventure leading Kentucky by three, 30 seconds to go. Jimmy Barron, huh? Oh my goodness, what a surprise. Atlantic 10, they'll be dancing in the streets of Oleon. <laughs> if they hold on. Enjai gets one of two. The lead is six, the time remaining, three minutes and 38 seconds. Dumberland, New York. Let's take you to Cleveland, where St. Bonaventure is looking for the upset of Kentucky. Too short. The Prince of Kentucky off a solid streak. Hits his fifth three-point shot today. Tayshawn Prince. Keeps Kentucky alive. We're tied at 63 with seven seconds left. Prato's been hot shooting the basketball deep. Then beat him over the top with a long jump shot. Everybody on their feet in a 63-63 tie ball game. I was surprised, Kevin, by really the patience of Kentucky. They didn't push it up the floor. I thought they might attack, try to get a two-pointer. They took their time, the solid screen, double pick right there, and Tayshon, who's been on all night long, five for nine from three-point land, 22 points. The game has held six ties and eight lead changes. And you don't want him to throw over the top and beat you off the dribble. Smith's got to stay in front of him. Here comes win by Smith to the hole. Can't get it to go. Saved by McClure. Buzzer sounds. Overtime for Kentucky. And a happy Jim Barron of St. Bonaventure. I don't think in his wildest dreams he thought he'd find himself in this situation. Two fifty-eight, long shot. Haynes got it. Oh my goodness! The early offense. Everybody paid attention down low. The kickback to Hayes. And this Creighton team, which had trailed by fifteen at the half, has climbed back to within one. <laughs> How about Hayes? He came out trying to get the crowd up, raising his arms. He surely provided a lift with that knockdown. They did it with three-point shooting and pressure defense after made baskets in the early part of this half. 150 to go now. McCadney. Oh, got a counter. Oh, my goodness. Step it up. Put it out there. He was deeper. Auburn has led since jumping out 6-5 in the early going. Here's Ryan Sears. And Pullman fouled him. And that's one of those Pullman shouldn't have fouled because you got Njai uh, looming in the background. 
But right here, the great hands by Sears. And how about this presence? About six seconds left on the shot clock. Doesn't matter. Knock it down from deep. A little early onions, too. Ryan Sears, who's an 80% free throw shooter, two of three for the day. And he gets a couple. Dana Altman, sixth year head coach at Creighton, has been an energetic source on that sideline. Boy, well, he sure has. Well, he got them out of a deep hole. He's got to make these to creep back in. Sears, 82% for the year, 50% today. The winner of this game will advance to take on either Iowa State or Central Connecticut State. They meet in game two here and he's 0 for two this trip that's inexplicable well, they, uh, if they were going to take him out i think he was tired for the first time he's had to run after pullman he is so upset right now and blaming himself he knows that's automatic let's see if they do get him a little blow ryan sears the junior six foot guard from ankeny iowa no distraught for the moment i guess not they're going west for johnson well, he's been the leader. And Donnie Johnson has played the last five minutes with four fouls, and he'll go to the bench. And at the other end, it's Mamadou Njai who goes to the free throw line. Three of five for Njai at the line in the ball game. Now, you look at Dan Altman. He's got all shooters out there, Vern. They go the other end, all deep threats. one and one. Njai shoots one and one. One more. The CBS Sports Line stat of the game, three-point field goals, Creighton 10 of 28, Auburn 11 of 21. Creighton, the second-best three-point shooting team in the country, suffered in the first half, 4 of 15. But they've been fueled by three-point bombs in this comeback. Njai, though, gets both trips to the line, 67-61. Now, Creighton should be able to get to the rim because everybody's going to be up on the three-point shooters. Plenty of time left. You don't have to take the deep one. Ben Walker, right side. Justin Haynes, spin move. Off the mark. Rebound, fish back. Loose ball. Chased down by oh, Sharp. Look at there. Look at it again. Oh, my goodness. Crawling. I mean, World War II type of effort. I mean, down in the box hole, digging for every inch. And this is what makes this event so enjoyable for the masses. I mean, guys give it everything. It may be the last opportunity you get to play in it. Or if you're a senior, you may just throw the shoes away. But give it all, laid it on the line. Ball to be inbound by Fishback. And he finds Doc Robinson, the leader of this Auburn team. Enjai's got a little bit of a mix. They ought to take advantage. Corver cannot guard him down on the block. They're going to use some time and then go for a little trap. Tough look. Robinson, it's saved and then tipped out of bounds by Walker. That will be Auburn ball. Ooh, a one-handed pass through the middle of the zone right up Auburn's alley. Fifty-one eight remaining. Holman, very clever. You got to watch him stepping and going to the rim. Sears has got to be careful. And fish back to him now. Here's Holman. Okay, really, uh, Thorner's going to get a foul. He's got to be careful down there. Haynes comes out with the trap. Give it to him. McGatney, foul. He'll go to the line. Oh, my goodness. Why would he pass it? To his buddy there, Mama Doom. Oh, well, maybe couldn't get control of the layup, but you're just going to see right in here the big fella waiting. Get me the basketball, and nobody covered him. You can just see Taylor a little bit late, and McCandy with a chance for the two. McGadney's second free throw attempt of the day. He'll shoot one more. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Ryan Sears of Creighton, 15 points and seven assists, and all out hustle end to end. And Damian Fishback, 16 points on six of nine shooting from the field for Auburn. Uh, Auburn able to match that stat you had earlier with the three point shots and the aggressive defense, too, in France. They've been solid. Still trying to find their identity. Got to get it quickie. Reggie Sharp, Corbett. Knocked out from behind by Reggie Sharp. That'll be Creighton's ball to inbound. He's just hugging him beyond the line there. 
and they're not going to be able to get to the only way they can get a three is get it in and kick it back out. Other than that, get the quick two, get in the denial, and give the foul. Corver launches the three, short, followed by Justin Haynes. Ooh, a little straight. That's why you bench press 375. And that cuts the margin to five points. Well, the ability to attack the rim, occasionally a little slippage on the checkout. Got to get ready for the press. A really large crowd for this early afternoon first round game in Minneapolis St. Paul at the Metrodome and this will be the site of the final four next year and in anticipation of that many of the members of the NCAA brass are here 68 mm -hmm. 63 with 23.6 remaining timeouts Auburn has three left great nut tell you love the city people even say hello to me <laughs> a great atmosphere they love their college basketball good use of the timeout get the foul get organized put the pressure on the free throw shooting now you look at this Creighton team they got Len Gordy's an assistant he used to work with Cliff at Clemson so in preparing for this game a lot of insight into what Cliff likes to do or he's doing it knowing it and doing it uh, two different entities Cliff Ellis in his sixth year as the head coach here former coach at Clemson last year the expectations so high for this Clemson team coming in as the number one seed and then finally getting knocked out by Ohio State this year with the loss of Chris Porter expectations really dropped along with their seeding Bill. well everybody felt going down the stretch they weren't the same team without him I think there were two and four got it back a little in the SEC tournament but you can still see they're moving out of sync offensively searching a lot of reliance on Doc Robinson's decision making and maybe not the power game they once had Ryan Sears just off the mark Njai gets the rebound, hauls it. Out of bounds. And a special moment now for the Auburn Tigers. This is a really nice story. And Auburn will advance to Iowa to meet the winner of the Iowa State Central Connecticut State game. Young man named Jimbo Talbert, number 15, student manager for the last two years. And he's been a part of the practice squad, particularly with Chris Porter suspended. And as a surprise to him, Cliff Ellis decided to put him in uniform and give him a chance to play. And here he is on his dad's 47th birthday. There's mom and dad. Isn't that special? Out of Montgomery, Alabama, Jimbo Tolbert, a 6'2 sophomore guard. Now, all-time leading three-point shooter in his high school's history, too, I might add, Catholic High School in Montgomery. He's no slouch. I hear he's very tough on the other managers now, though. Sears cans the three-pointer. They just don't stop, don't they? No. They get the turnover? No. Now the three-pointer for Ryan Sears. This will be Creighton's ball. And they get him and Jimbo Tolbert. That was that was brief. Oh my goodness. Well, just just pack the uniform. You don't have to get it dry clean. Oh, I wanted to see the kid get a shot. They, he was wondering why he was taken out. He wants to know why he was taken out, Cliff. What did I do wrong, Coach? John and Mary, his parents, watching. There's a three from the corner. Darrell Taylor. And 3.8 at the other end. Enjoy. Can't save it. They're going to say he had to touch it. That's a big no. He didn't touch it, so they go back to the end line with 3 8 on the clock. Oh, mama, do how could you? No, mama, don't. Oh, I thought he got a piece of it live, Vern. Let's see. Yep, I thought he got a touch. Bad break for Auburn. 30 second timeout. Was 72 69 3.8 remaining Mamadou Njai arguing that he did touch the ball I, I think he's got a case he did change direction yep and this is one of those areas where Cliff wanted it, it's not a correctable error situation though it's a judgment call and even the, with the replay could you totally disagree with it if you're an official I mean they're closer than we are and in their mind it wasn't it, touched, but I thought he did get a piece. Well, they need a three now with 3.8 left. It cannot be reviewed because it did not involve a timing circumstance 
or whether it was a three or a two. Right, correctable error situation. They get it to Walker. He is clean block. Clean block, Mamadou Njai. He got a piece of that one. Now, Mamadou. Uh, <laughs> oh, what a courageous effort by Dana Altman's Creighton team. I mean, just magnificent. And Auburn still trying to find himself, Byrne. And Cliff knows every win for his club gets them together more harmonious. Well, the question was, did he touch the long pass? The ref said no. This one, no judgment. The big guy prevails. And he'll sing a happy song tonight. The Warbler. They were up by 15 at the half. And Creighton climbed back to within one. Could not climb over the hump and get the lead. But they made a heck of a game with of it. 72-69 is the final. 72-69. Our final score right now, back to Greg Gumbel. A minute and 22 seconds to go in the overtime. The From Tigers, the first team to advance in this year's tournament, 72-69. Let's take you to Cleveland. Kevin Harlan and John Sunbold.